as they thunder away to a perfect start. Fight. The inaugural roar of engines in 1950 marked not just the beginning of a race, but the birth of an era that would etch its name into the annals of sporting history. Formula One emerged as a symbol of speed, innovation and global competition. The start of the 1950s kicked off the Formula One frenzy, making its debut with a bang at Silverstone, UK. This wasn't just any race, it was the big leagues where legends like Giuseppe Farina in his Alfa Romeo zoomed past the finish line first, setting the stage for F1's thrilling future. The 50s were all about the big names. Juan Manuel Fangio was the star, bagging five world championships and sparking epic rivalries, especially with Sterling Moss. It was more than just the drivers, though. Teams like Alfa Romeo, Ferrari and Mercedes-Benz were the brains behind the brawn, engineering sleek speed machines that pushed the limits of what cars could do on the track. Drivers were like modern-day knights, racing with guts and pushing the limits. Their bravery added layers of drama and passion to every win. It wasn't all exciting, though, as Formula One, in the same decade, witnessed tragic losses of several drivers. Joe Fry and Raymond Sommer both passed away in 1950, Luigi Fagioli in 1952, and Charles de Tonaco and Felice Bonetto in 1953. The list continued with Guy Meres, Onofre Marimon and Alberto Ascari in 1954, followed by Pierre Levey and Don Beaumont in 1955. Each of these drivers left a legacy in the sport, their passing underscoring the dangers of motorsport during its early years and in turn helped change the sport for the better. F1 saw a major shift in the 60s where the British team started to rule the tracks. It was a time when British brains, like those at Lotus, Cooper, BRM and McLaren, began outsmarting Italian and German tech with their fresh ideas and innovations. Cooper was a game changer, flipping the script with the mid-engine layout, making cars handle better and go faster. Lotus, led by the genius Colin Chapman, was all about simplify, then add lightness. They came up with the Lotus 25, a car so sleek and sturdy thanks to its monocoque chassis, it zoomed Jim Clark right to his first world championship in 1963. The 60s were all about British innovation steering Formula One into a new era and about the heroes driving those speed machines. Clark, from Scotland, was the man of the hour, nailing two world championships with his slick driving. Then you had Graham Hill, known for his charm and that unmistakable moustache, grabbing two titles himself and nailing the triple crown of motorsport a feat no one else has matched. Just like Clark, Jackie Stewart, known as the Flying Scott, emerged as a formidable competitor towards the latter part of the decade. Stewart brought a new consciousness to the sport, along with clinching three world championships during his career. Towards the late 60s, F1 got serious about aerodynamics. Teams started playing around to keep their cars glued to the track, making them zip around corners faster. This was just the start of F1's obsession with aero tweaks that would later define the sport. The Brits were leading the pack in F1, showcasing their knack for innovation and competitive edge. This decade set the stage for F1's future, celebrating the gutsy driving, cutting-edge tech, and the sheer will to push the boundaries of speed. The 70s turned F1 into a worldwide show, mixing racing with big business and tech advancements. Sponsorships really took off, starting with Lotus's deal with Imperial Tobacco, which pretty much turned F1 cars into flashy ads for all sorts of companies, boosting the sport's budget and professionalism. Safety also got a major spotlight due to too many tragic accidents. Drivers like Jackie Stewart fought hard for better safety measures, leading to the introduction of barriers, helmets, fireproof suits, and even the safety car to protect everyone at the races. Aerodynamics got a big boost with the introduction of wings and ground effect tech, making cars faster and changing how they were designed. Materials like carbon fiber started popping up, pointing the way to how future race cars would be built. In short, F1 really started to look like the modern sport we know today, with big money, bigger safety and the fastest tech on wheels. At this point, F1 was all about epic showdowns and champions that became legends. Think Nicky Lauda and James Hunt's intense rivalry in 76, which is still talked about thanks to Lauda's unbelievable comeback after a life-threatening crash. Then you had stars like Emerson Fittipaldi and Jody Schechter, who not only clinched titles, but also won fans over with their grit and talent. 
This era wasn't just about the track action. It's when F1 went global. Races started popping up far beyond Europe, in places like North and South America, Asia and Africa, pulling in fans from all over and turning F1 into a worldwide phenomenon. Looking back, the 70s transformed F1 big time. These years were game changing. The unforgettable rivalries and characters of the time really put F1 on the map globally, setting the stage for its future as the top tier of motorsport. Then came another evolution of F1, the 80s that cranked up the speed and power with turbocharged engines. This move kicked off a tech revolution, seeing teams like Renault, Ferrari, and eventually, McLaren and Williams, pushing cars to the edge with over 1,000 horsepower in some cases. It was like flipping the speed game on its head, with cars zooming faster than ever. The 80s saw teams dive into an all-out tech battle, introducing stuff like active suspension, using carbon fiber to make cars lighter yet stronger, and tweaking aerodynamics for better performance. These advancements weren't just cool, they made the cars safer and more beastly to drive. Then there were the epic rivalries, especially the clash between Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost. These two didn't just race, they turned F1 into a saga of strategy, skill, and sometimes serious drama, setting the bar for what a sports rivalry could be. Despite the tech leap, the 80s were a stark reminder of F1's risks. Tragic accidents and losses, like Gilles Villeneuve and Elio De Angelis, pushed safety back under the spotlight. The decade ended with a push for better safety measures, shaping a safer future for the sport. So, the 80s? A wild ride of power, innovation, rivalry, and a wake-up call on safety, all rolled into one unforgettable F1 era. As the decade progressed, the landscape of Formula One began to shift yet again. The FIA, concerned with the escalating speeds and the potential for accidents, moved to ban turbocharged engines by the end of the 1988 season. The 1990s in Formula One were characterized by a blend of fierce rivalries, technological refinement, and a concerted push towards globalizing the sport. The introduction of electronic aids such as traction control, semi-automatic gearboxes, and active suspension systems marked this era, enhancing the performance and drivability of the cars. These advancements would eventually lead to debates about driver aids and their impact on the sport. The 90s was dominated by the rise of Michael Schumacher, who would go on to become one of the most successful and influential drivers in the history of Formula One. Schumacher's fierce competitiveness, incredible talent, and strategic brilliance helped him secure two championships with Benetton in the mid-90s before moving to Ferrari, where he sought to revive the fortunes of the iconic but struggling team. Schumacher's rivalries with Damon Hill, Jacques Villeneuve, and later, Maika Hekkinen provided some of the decade's most thrilling on-track battles. These rivalries were not just about individual races or championships. They were narratives that captivated fans worldwide, showcasing the sport's competitive spirit and the personalities that defined an era. In the same decade, under the stewardship of Bernie Ecclestone, the sport's commercial rights holder, Formula One ventured into new markets in Asia and the Middle East, bringing the sport to a wider audience and increasing its commercial appeal. This expansion was accompanied by a significant increase in television broadcasting rights, sponsorships, and merchandising, making Formula One a global sporting powerhouse. The 90s was also a decade marked by tragedy. The deaths of Ayrton Senna and Roland Ratzenberger during the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix weekend were a somber reminder of the inherent dangers of motorsport. These tragic events, again, led to a renewed and intensive focus on improving safety standards, resulting in significant changes in car design, circuit layout, and the implementation of new safety protocols that have continued to evolve to this day. The 21st century heralded a new era for Formula One. The 2000s was dominated by Michael Schumacher and Ferrari, a combination that was beyond deadly for competitors. Schumacher, under leadership of Ross Braun and the management of Jean Todt, helped Ferrari secure five consecutive drivers' championships from 2000 to 2004. This period was marked by Schumacher's relentless pursuit of perfection, his extraordinary skill set that blended speed with strategic acumen, and a team that was at the zenith of its powers, both in terms of technical innovation and operational excellence. The 2000s 
continued the trend of rapid technological advancement. This included the development of increasingly sophisticated aerodynamics, the exploitation of electronic aids, and innovations in tire technology, particularly through the intense competition between suppliers Bridgestone and Michelin. This era also saw significant regulatory changes aimed at curbing costs, improving safety, and enhancing competition. These changes included restrictions on testing, the introduction of standardized tire suppliers, and the eventual phasing out of many electronic aids that had become ubiquitous in the late 90s. While Schumacher and Ferrari's dominance defined the early part of the decade, the latter half saw the rise of new champions who would leave their mark on the sport. Fernando Alonso and Renault emerged as formidable challengers, securing back-to-back -back titles in 2005 and 2006, ending Ferrari's reign. This period also saw the emergence of Lewis Hamilton, who is pretty well known in today's age if I do say so myself, who captured his first championship in 2008 in a dramatic season finale, signaling the arrival of a new superstar in the sport. The 2000s were marked by significant advances in safety. These advancements included the introduction of the hands device to protect drivers' necks and the establishment of the FIA Institute for Motorsport Safety. In the last decade, referred to as the hybrid era, saw the introduction of advanced power unit technologies with the start of the 2014 season. The season marked a pivotal change in Formula One's approach to racing technology with the introduction of hybrid power units. These complex systems combined a 1.6-litre V6 turbocharged engine with energy recovery systems that harnessed electrical power from braking and exhaust gases. The transition to hybrid technology ushered in a period of dominance by Mercedes-AMG Petronas Formula One team, with Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg being two of the aces behind the team's success. Hamilton, in particular, emerged as the era's defining driver, breaking numerous records and securing multiple world championships. Mercedes's mastery of the hybrid power unit set new benchmarks for success in Formula One. The eruption of the social media in the early 2010s and Formula One's adaptation into it significantly increased in the sport's presence on digital platforms. This shift was critical in engaging a younger global audience, breaking down the barriers of entry for new fans and providing unprecedented access to the personalities and behind-the-scenes workings of the sport. The acquisition of Formula One by Liberty Media in 2017 accelerated this trend with a focus on improving fan engagement, expanding the sport's digital footprint, and exploring new commercial opportunities. The hybrid era has not been short on on-track drama and the emergence of new stars. Drivers like Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and Daniel Ricciardo have risen to challenge the established order, creating thrilling battles and promising a competitive future for the sport. The rivalry between Hamilton and Verstappen, culminating in their intense championship fight in 2021, has been particularly emblematic of this era. As Formula One continues to evolve, it remains a mirror to the changing world around it. The 2024 F1 season is gearing up to be one for the history books. So yeah, buckle up, get ready for non-stop action, nail-biting finishes, and maybe even a few surprises along the way.